The next storyteller coming up to the microphone loves New York because he said it is the city that never sleeps. I love New York for that reason too. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Aielli. Good evening, everybody. 9-11, of course you gotta shorten it. <clears throat> On 9-11, I was proud to wear the uniform of a New York City cop. I was raised in Brooklyn, one of four boys. My mom's a spunky, old-fashioned Italian lady. She taught us, she raised us to be respectful, humble, and modest. She taught us the importance to have a structured routine. Like the night before school, you prepared your school uniforms. You pressed your eye on your white college shirt, your red tie. First to fourth grade, you wore a red tie. Then fifth to eighth, you graduated to a blue tie. Uniform was black shoes with a shine, gray pants with a stripe, you black belt, pen and pencil holder, and you even ironed and, and you starched your handkerchief for your pocket. Next day, she would say, get to school on time. Make your father proud. Do your best. <clears throat> Later, come home from school, mom would be there. She'd be there to help us. She'd say, homework first, then you go play with your friends. Come home from school, excuse me. Later on in the day, dinner time, family time, dad would be home from work, wonderful meal, talk about the events of the day, special time. <clears throat> Finish your homework after, after your dinner, prepare your uniform, polish your shoes, say your prayers, lights out, early to bed, early to rise. This routine was flawless, went like clockwork for many years up until my eighth grade, grammar school. On a February, Monday day, my dad would go to work, sustain a massive heart attack, and my hero wouldn't come home. After that, our routine changed drastically. I'd come home from school, mom wouldn't be there. She was working one of her two jobs to support our family. <clears throat> Me and my brothers took on responsibilities around the house because we knew we had to help her. We all knew we had to finish school to get a job so she, to help this poor woman that was working so hard. So I joined the ranks of the NYPD, proud to wear my un uniform, patent leather shoes, navy blue pants with the stripe, lighter blue shirt, police patch, shiny shield, and my instant muscles ballistic vest made you look twice as big. <clears throat> Every day on the job was a learning experience. No two days were alike. 9-11, first day of school. I'm blessed to have two children, a boy and a girl. They both have special needs. I took them to their special programs. The first day, they didn't cry. I said, it's going to be a wonderful day. Turn, as the events of the day turned out to be the worst day in my life. I responded to the World Trade Center shortly after the towers fell. And I would be assigned there for the next six months. And I got to tell you, it was the most difficult task to go there every day to witness the destruction and devastation. We were there every day, so many hours, no matter what the weather was. Really put you at a bad frame of mind. <clears throat> Then the worst painful memory that I have of 9-11, I would call it my nightmare, witnessing the victim's families lining up to give DNA samples to the medical examiner. Some would have hair brushes, some would have toothbrushes, a few have dental and medical records. <clears throat> that destroyed me to witness that. It put a face on the evil of 9-11 and the profound loss that it caused. Then I would see a little boy about the age of my son. He was standing with an older sibling. He was looked so frightened, and nobody was paying any mind. I went to him, I said, son, can I help you? He said, my dad's missing from the towers. Can you help me find him? I gave him a hug, and I promised him we'll do everything we can to bring him home. There were so many things that went through my mind. I wanted to tell him, because I knew the tough road that this child was going to face. My heart was broken for this little boy. And the only thing I told him was never to lose faith. The many days, weeks, and months, I had such difficulty, and I'm ashamed to say this, to brush my hair or brush my teeth. I couldn't even look at a toothbrush or hairbrush, so I hid him in the vanity drawer in my bathroom. I would wake up in the morning having a negotiation in my head. Do I need to brush my hair? Do I need to brush my teeth? The hair wasn't a problem. I can just put a hat on my head. 
or eventually I would shave it down to a military cut. Then I would convince myself, just use mouthwash so I wouldn't have to lose, look at a toothbrush. Because just looking at those things put me in a bad place. I didn't need anything to make me feel worse than I did because I need the strength to go back to the World Trade Center, the pile every day. So my service was done, and I was reassigned back to my narcotics division. April 1st, I sustained a line of duty injury not related to 9-11. I was forced to retire from the job I loved. I was forced to leave my brothers and sisters in blue, my police family. They told me that I was unable to perform my duties. I would no longer wear my uniform as a New York City cop. It was bittersweet to retire at 42, but I wasn't a happy camper. I felt alone. I felt alienated. I felt I lost my purpose in life. My then wife, she said, Paul, let's move away, start somewhere new. So she convinced me, so I escaped to the suburbs of South Jersey. And you know what? Life started to feel normal. Life actually improved. I actually felt some happiness. Then I would wake up one morning, and I have to carry my wife to the bathroom because cancer has taken all the strength. I would freshen her up, wash her face, brush her teeth, and brush her hair. And as I brush her hair, a good amount of the hair stays on the brush. But you know what? It provided me with so much comfort because I knew I was helping her. I wanted to feel that I loved her. And this would be my routine for the next seven months until God called her home. <clears throat> and then, before she passed away, before she died, she made me promise that I would volunteer with the church and help people, inspire people to do good. <clears throat> and I made good on that promise. I joined some missionaries, ministries in my church. I tried to help where I could. Then I would discover this tribute. I would meet the most amazing, the most courageous. People taught me what it is to be brave. My fellow docents, they inspire me. Before I was someone didn't want to talk about 9-11. I didn't want to know about it. I wanted to forget about it. Now I'll talk to whoever will listen. Thank you for this privilege. I do want to do a name correction. I actually pronounced his name incorrectly, and that was Paul Ionelli. Beautifully, beautifully done. Thank you so much for sharing your story. The Italian names, I don't know. I know. I get flustered because you guys are so handsome. Oh. 